Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Half Gen Podcast. This one's on time, because I say so. I am the dictator of when the time is accurate for the podcast. I have that time shift. Time (laughs) shift. (laughs) The great demo, lousy game. Yeah, I got a I got a fresh cut today. You like it? Nice, nice. Yeah, a little overdue. Um, I'm just wearing a hoodie. Yeah. I'm just sitting here rocking a t-shirt. You know, same old. I got my uh, my, my new little Gundam boy back there. Haven't built it yet. Mm, waiting for uh, it. Yeah, the room is going to look a little like washed out probably. I've got a lot of natural light. I got the, the blinds open because the natural light is out more now. It's yeah, that time of yeah. year where it's like, yo, pop open the blinds. It's true. Then you I have, don't have to have these yeah, lights you, on all the time. You have cleaned the room from the last time I saw it. it looks, yeah, looks better. It's, it's actually a little bit of a mess right now because I still I haven't put away my stuff from PAX yet. Because <laughs> well, because so okay, let, let's let's Here let's get go. right into this story. Um, <laughs> we're gonna talk about PAX, but anyway, so we come back from PAX Sunday night. Our you know used to pre- previously editor I do that now, but previously editor Tony um, had flew in from Texas to go to PAX with us. Uh, he came back here with me Sunday night. We were supposed to, uh, he was supposed to catch a flight Monday morning. We set an alarm on my Google and everyone in the house heard it. Every single person heard me set that alarm, heard Google respond and say that alarm was set. That alarm never went off. And so he wakes me up and he's like, Hey, your alarm didn't go off. And I was like, oh, shit, what time is it? He's like, 540. I'm like, oh, when does your flight leave? Six. Oh, we're not making that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so he ended up being here an extra day. And so we, you know, got lunch and played games and stuff. We slept in a little bit. Um, and then he finally left Tuesday morning. I have to tell you, oh boy. you didn't hear it probably from your room. I didn't hear it from my room when I was, when we were staying at your place, when that man sleeps, he makes inhuman noise. Um, I did not sleep while he was here, uh, because he kept waking me up. Probably had and- sleep apnea. <laughs> Yeah, I told him to get tested. It was bad because a couple times I think I got worried every time it stopped. I was like, did he just stop breathing? Did he just die? <laughs> did he just? No, don't. <laughs> I don't want to throw that love seat out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep a love seat someone died on. <laughs> That's not love anymore. <laughs> um, But my God. Uh inhuman i've never heard a person make noises like that which makes me a little more confident that i don't have sleep sleep apnea i just snore um but he was not snoring dear god i don't know how other tony fell asleep like it was like every like couple seconds like somebody revved a dirt bike i just (laughs) i I, I like you laugh but that's what it was (laughs) like Holy shit. <laughs> you know, like normal person, you hear them snore, they're like, you know, regular snoring sound. No, not this guy. He's just like, <laughs> and that was the exhale. It's just like, <laughs> it just sounds like a, like a drag car crashing. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like it's every time. And it's just like, I would turn to go to sleep when it would ease. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> And it's that, just man, like, I that man needs some help i can't do the noise justice <laughs> because i can't make it i physically cannot make the noises i heard but like the way he was breathing in it's like he 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 not only ascended past snoring he was super snoring three <sighs> this is what it is to be a super snorer beyond a, sn- a super snorer Tony, if you're listening to this, get tested for sleep apnea. Because I told you him. Have it. 
I told him I like because I accidentally woke him up because at one point I wasn't sure. So I like waved my hand to see if he was breathing and he just looks up. He's like, hey, <laughs> and I'm like, you're not sleeping either. <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? I was like, you need to get tested. You're going to die, dude. Yeah, l- like literally, though, it sounds yeah. like it's really bad. If you were someone, you know, makes inhuman noises while they sleep, air quotes, uh, tell them to get tested for sleep apnea or they will die. Yeah. A harsh truth. I have sleep apnea myself. It's not just it's not just people who are overweight. I know that's a stereotype about sleep apnea. Anyone can have it. I was just making a title, a potential title note. Okay. That's what that message was. I wasn't sure. Uh, I just okay. looked at it. Yeah. I did not. No. Oh, I didn't okay. hear it. I just saw you look over and I was like, oh, he might have just seen my message. Oh, no. I'm yeah. logging into my anime list for to prepare for later conversations. Wait, are we doing that on this episode or are we doing a separate? Well, if we're just going to talk about packs, not going to lie, it's going to be a pretty short episode. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Fair. Um... <laughs> I mean, shit, let's just get into it. PAX. PAX was yep. this past weekend. Uh, we went. It was... Woof! PAX was not great, but the time I spent with people at PAX yes. was phenomenal. Yes. We had a lot of fun when we left PAX and just kind of went around and roamed the city. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it honest was just, to God, it was, just it, being in Boston was, a, was fun. Yeah, it was just... It was a down year. Um, still... Not many publishers coming out, um, especially there was zero large publishers there. Um, yeah. And in terms of the stuff that was on the show floor, in terms of games, there was the only thing that remotely caught my eye was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, which I didn't feel like was worth waiting in line for. And that was it. The only thing I waited in line for was Tony and I waited in line to play We Were Here Forever, um, Mm. which is a game we've talked about on the show in the past. Uh, It is an asymmetrical co-op game. Um, There was a really cool puzzle they had us doing where basically, like, we would each be on these separate platforms and we could see each other. But we could also see like symbols on these platforms and you could rotate the platform to line up these symbols, which would open a door to send you to like another room. Mm -hmm. And then you could turn like a crank and then that would bring up more platforms. And then, you know, you're gradually looking around like, okay, so I can get you there if you turn your thing clockwise twice. I turn my counterclockwise once Then we can go there, activate that. Then we turn that there. It's, it's really fun. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Just sitting there and just like, just being like, okay, how are we getting this? Okay. So if you do this and I do this and then it's just like those, those games are so fun and you know, it's, it's great that they're still able to make those, uh, you know, I got to talk to one of the devs while I was there, uh, who happened to be, so the original game was, uh, a project for, a class and the guy i spoke to was actually the teacher of that class uh and so basically they were going to sell the game but the teacher told them to release it for free just to kind of test the water uh and they got thousands tens of thousands of downloads and the game did really well and that ended up being a really good like launching point for them to be like play the first one for free by the way we made a sequel you know and then people buy the sequel and then they made the third game so it was we were here it was we were here too and then it was we were here together and now it's we were here forever. So, boy, if you're cataloging that, that's a nightmare to keep track of. The- <laughs> so, uh, uh, not really a spoiler for the games themselves, but the main characters of this one is kind of what I was hoping for. So, in the first game, and I believe the second game, one of the characters always gets left behind. So, only one okay. person can leave. So, mm-hmm. I bl- the fourth game is the two people that got left behind in the other games. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that's kind of cool. And like over the course of these games, they've gradually been building up the idea of a bigger story at play. Um, Kind of really culminating in the third game with some really like creepy shit happening. Like (laughs) I remember we were doing one puzzle and like I was in the back having to like pull these levers and stuff. Tony's out front and he's like, Hey, um, 
this thing out here is moving. And I'm like, what do you mean it's moving? He's like, it's getting closer. I'm like, oh, he's like, you should work faster. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we ended up failing. So I was like, let me see this shit. And then I saw it. And like, it's just sitting there, you know, it's like this marionette thing. And then like it moves and it just like, ah, like gets closer and creepier. And I was just like, yo, you got to fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> We got to get the hell out of here. You hit the switch. <laughs> but um, we should play through those. Uh, I, w- I would be totally down because I've only played. I played both perspectives of the first game, but I've only played one perspective of. So each person gets a different perspective based on which character they're playing. So that's the nice thing is there's replayability because you can play something like you can play the other side of the thing you did the first time uh, and, and, you know, get to experience that differently, which is nice. Um, so there, there's replayability in that regard, but they're just really good games. They're generally like really good puzzles. There's a few that historically have been like, I don't like this puzzle as much, but like, you know, that's a minor gripe and, uh, uh, overall a series that I really, really like. Uh, so that it was really fun talking to them. They're like 40 people strong now. And when we went up to the booth, they were like, have you, have you ever heard of our game before? And I was like, I played all of them and I can't wait for this one. And they were like, yes, do you want a mouse pad? (laughs) And I said, yes, I want a mouse pad. Um, but yeah, they were like, we're so, we're always so happy when people who have played the game, they're like a lot of people come by and they've never heard of us. And so, you know, we got to explain the game, but they're like, we really love when people who have played our games, come over and want to play the new one um you know and they were like you know this is a puzzle that's not really like you know it's nothing you're gonna spoil for yourself so i was like yeah let's fucking do it like let's roll this looks like a lot of fun so we waited i think like half an hour they were 15 minute uh demos Mm -hmm. but you know just talking to them they're they're really happy most of that original like team that made it uh i think like it was a team of like maybe I don't remember exactly how many, but six of them stayed on to make Total Mayhem Games, which is a very strange name for the type of games they make, uh, (laughs) which are generally nonviolent, asymmetrical co-op. I did talk to them. I was like, you know, because they're definitely a studio that I'm like, yo, when you guys put a game out, I'm going to play it uh, one way or another. And I was talking to them and I was like, I don't know, like what, what you have planned beyond this. And they were like, well, you know, we, we don't know what we're going to do next, but we know it's going to be co-op. Cause that's yeah, their DNA kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So whatever they make yeah. next, even if it's not another asymmetrical co-op game, it's going to be co-op something, uh, which is always good in my book. Uh, so I'm real excited. That game comes out, I think May 10th. Uh, I'm actually going to double check that real quick. Yeah, it's it's cool that they've seen as much growth as they have with kind of how everything started for them. From May tenth, and now the professor who was the professor of like the the game design class is now working for the students that he taught. Yep, <laughs> and which is and they're is they're successful. Good. They're growing. They're making a lot of you know. They're, I imagine they're making a lot of money because they keep hiring people and making more games. So. You know, mm-hmm. uh, good good for them, and they're making good games in the process. So that's always the best part is when the the end product is continually getting better. And he talked about the struggle of like, you know, making a sequel, especially because this is their fourth game, and they're like, okay, it's learning from the last sequels, what everybody liked, and things we can improve, and things that maybe we don't need to keep. And he's like, you know, we got to make sure that each new game appeals to a wider audience while also not alienating the audience we've built over the last three games, uh, yeah. which is an unenviable task because you don't want it to be too familiar because then it's boring. Right. You want it to right. also be fresh enough that there's new people who are like, what the hell is this game? I want to check it out, you know, cause it's a game I hope is going to, you know, kind of jump. It's going to be one of those games you see in the slider on steam and we were here together or we were here forever out now, you know, like I, mm-hmm. I wish them nothing but success. Uh, and I strongly encourage anybody with even a vague interest. You have nothing to lose playing. We were here. It's free. It's like two hours, not even like two. Let me see what my play time on that was. Sounds like these guys are kind of turning into your version of 
my love for super giant in terms of a small indie dev i played 85 minutes and that was both playthroughs fair enough so like it's it's not a huge time sink and you can get a really good idea um we were here two one playthrough was just over 101 minutes uh we were here together took us about four hours they said this game the new one is going to be about 12 wow that's a big yeah jump. so it's going to be meaty uh so i'm pumped for that like i i'm i'm glad that it's not going to be a one session game because i i want to spend some time really digging into it uh but they already like e even in that like test puzzle they had they had like a really cool story element with like this creepy guy coming in and just being like let's see how you're doing you know and i was like oh that son of a bitch is back um <laughs> messing up my stuff but yeah they're, they're you should definitely check these games out uh everybody especially you ross because i think i think you would genuinely enjoy these games yeah yeah um definitely need to that was that was my thing i definitely had to do at pax and i did it and I'm very glad. I'm very much looking forward to that game. Not too long of a wait now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's forgot what day it was. Yep. Almost May. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guess crazy. what? Uh, it's no. going to be May. See, you don't like the Twitter account that just says it's the weekend. Yeah. No. You break that out. It's the same thing. <laughs> you set the difference is you set me up and I have that account blocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm i follow it so hard <laughs> no. i do not uh, if i have to see daniel craig being ladies and gentlemen the weekend again I. Oh. but that was kind of pax <laughs> that was pax yes uh i bought yeah. dice mm, yes. level up dice uh i think that's the only thing i bought at pax yeah, I, I went in there ready to drop some money I did not have, and I did not buy a single thing at PAX. It's just even like the vendor booths. In the just... past, there have been like a lot of devs, like when the Behemoth was making like Battle Block Theater, uh, mm -hmm. they were there and they had like Castle Crasher statues and stuff you could buy. Um, mm -hmm. So, like in the past, like some of the devs, they would sell their own merch at their booth uh, and, you know, that's exactly what bioware did exclusively at this year's show yeah. they had a big booth with the mass effect stuff on it and it was just a bioware store um and the stuff i wanted i should have bought the enamel pin but i was like <laughs> let me wait till sunday when they inevitably mark everything down and i was right they did but it was gone oh uh, and i made mistakes yeah everything was 30 percent off but the pin was sold out that's what patience will get you. Yeah. Misery. Misery. Patience is, is a misery business. We both went different directions on that, but they both work. <laughs> I think it's both the song, same song. <laughs> no, ignorance is my new best friend. Damn. Yep. I put two songs together. You did. Paramore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I I don't have much more to add for PAX itself. Um you won't do you want to talk about like where we went after on Saturday? Yeah. We went to Newberry street in Boston, which is kind of just a street full of stores and shops. Uh, so there's a Newberry comics there. Uh, I think that's the original is... Newberry comics. That would make sense. Yeah, yeah. I believe that's the OG store. Um, there was an anime store called anime Zaka. That was super neat. That's where um, I got my, uh, that's where I got that, right? The master grade kit. Was that anime? Yes. Zaka? Yeah. Yes. And then I got, hold on. Yeah. Let me grab my stuff. When did I buy a Newberry? Oh. oh. Okay. Um, wait. Okay. I bought this. I bought this. I bought this. No. Where's the other one? This one. Okay. All an elaborate scheme. For Chris to unpack his pack stuff. <laughs> no, it's all right here. I bought I bought this um, G frame uh, strike Gundam uh, that I have to put together. Uh, I bought this pack of holographic Transformers stickers 
And I was like, boy, I hope I get Optimus Prime. The first one. <laughs> Boom. Optimus Prime. And the hits keep coming. Megatron. They don't stop coming. Optimus Prime again. <laughs> Bumblebee. And your boy, Soundwave. That was a solid win. Pack. $5 well spent. Solid, solid pack. Solid pack, ladies and gentlemen. Transformers, once again, coming in clutch. Uh, and, and really just outdoing themselves. I can hear, I can hear these cards. It's <laughs> how close they are to my childhood. It's like every time I flip a card, I just hear the voice of that Transformer. Uh, and then I bought some shirts... He's wearing one of them. No, this, no, I'm not. <laughs> Perfect. This is another shirt I bought. You, you passed the test. Uh, yeah, so can you tell I like Attack on Titan? <laughs> this one has the front patch and the back. This one just has the front. Um, also, can you tell I like Attack on Titan? No. Another Attack on Titan shirt. Um, this shirt actually feels much nicer than this one. This one's like a... Hmm firmer fabric maybe it'll loosen up over time it's 100 percent cotton what is this is this also 100 percent cotton this has to be something some kind it's of old choice there cotton let's see if both, it pans out they're both cotton this one's made in pakistan no oh. where's this one made do i know mexico oh so wow shirt made in pakistan feels a lot nicer than the shirt made in mexico worldly shirts Yes. I will show you the world via shirts. Um, um, I got, I, I don't have I it in this room with me right now, but I got the complete collection of the Ghost in the Shell manga, like a deluxe edition kind of oversized set, which I'm excited to dive into. And I got this. Dun, dun, dun. For our audio listeners, it is basically the forearm of Ava Unit 1 from Evangelion that's I can like put on my arm like like the Mass Effect helmet type of deal um, and yeah it's it was released as part of the final movie coming out you can see the 3.0 plus 1.0 and Evangelion is my favorite and they were like yeah this is like 95 bucks and I was like I'll take it and then the owner was like, here's some other stuff we have in the back for Evangelion. I was like, one of them was just a bust of the head of Ava Unit 1 to like mount on the wall. And I was like, I can get away with this, sir, because I can put this on a shelf. My wife will kill me if I get the bust to put up on the wall. And he's like, I totally get it. Here's the arm. <laughs> and I was like, awesome. That was a man who understood you on just a he fundamental did. level. He really did. He really and that did. was at the anime store. And then this was my $90 plus dollar purchase. My Boom. master grade Freedom Gundam. Frame that. One one hundredth scale. It's the coolest image. Frame that cardboard box. I fucking love Gundam <laughs> so much. And it's great because on my on my Discord, like for my stream and stuff, we do anime night. And the Thursday before PAX, we did anime night. And it was the first episode where the fuck we were watching Gundam Seed and it was the reveal of the freedom. Mm -hmm. I can hear the song. I can hear the music playing in my head of this thing's first launch. Neither will alone nor strength alone. Will this take you where you want to go? <laughs> yes, it will. He's in it. He's in it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking love Gundam Seed, and the Freedom is my favorite Gundam of all time. That thing is just so cool, and like it, it's it, Gundam Seed is based on it, it's a modernization of the original Gundam. So basically, the Strike is the original Gundam, and this is the new Gundam. You know the NU mm. Gundam. Fuck new Gundam. Freedom is way cooler than that piece of garbage. Way cooler. I'm not going to lie, after after all the Gundam talk, I went across the various streaming platforms and flagged all of the Gundam series to add to my cues to start watching. To watch Gundam Seed. Do you want to see all I'm... the models I have? Because I got all my models together. Do you want to oh, see yeah, all sure. the ones I have? Yeah, sure. Right, hold on. Let 
you're missing out if you're not watching this on youtube.com slash half gen that's not a real that's, website no nope. it's youtube.com slash a jumble of random things because we don't have enough subscribers for for our name exactly <sighs> I think I'll subscribe. <laughs> you can also watch the video version on Spotify. I'm going to start uploading it. So you can oh, do that. Yeah. Um, so this is the upgraded version of the free. This is the strike freedom. Uh, so this is the one that has like the gold, mm. but it's still really cool. Was that the one that was at the hobby place? That one that was like all gold. Is this like a variation? No, of no, 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 no. That's the a different all thing? gold one. That okay. was like Gundam Unicorn. I haven't really watched oh, okay. that. This Gosh. is, without spoiling, this is from season two of Gundam Seed. Okay. This happens eventually. The Strike Freedom is probably like one of the most overpowered Gundams of all time. Like the Freedom, the family of Freedom Gundams is my favorite of all time. And just depending on which series I'm watching at the moment, that one is my favorite, uh, whether sure, it's original sure. or Strike Freedom. Strike Freedom is weird because it has like really gaudy gold on it, but like when you in the sh like it's it's so fucking stupid strong though because it's as it's as strong as the original Freedom, and then they gave it what's called a dragoon system. So basically, oh, you have me there. Yep, the wings deploy as their own little guns, so the wings fly off and become drones and fire lasers. So more guns. Yes. You know what yes. I have to say to that. Gun damn. Retta, Retta hated liked it. that. She loved it. She's put laughing that in right the titles. now. Put that in the title. Put that in the thing right now. Type it. Put, put that gun in the put, put, gun just damn. Type it in okay. our just type it in yep. our thing. Um, yep. For for those of you listening, it will the dog barking will end soon. I think the mailman is here. But yeah, the the strike freedom. The strike and the, the the freedom, the strike freedom, and probably the strike. They're just like my top three. I love those Gundams. Um, yeah. Also, a top a top five right here. Jesus, Retta. Gundam Exia. This one is a real grade, so this one's slightly nicer than the hobby grades. This is Gundam mm. Exia from Gundam Double O. I like it because it has a big old honking sword on it. How can you say no to a sword? Hold on. <laughs> Dog. Dog. Yes. Hey. You're not even looking at the UPS guy. You just hear him. Don't growl at me. I'm not the UPS guy. Stop that. He's leaving. Can you calm down? See, he's driving away. You're fine. You're delirious from daycare. Go back to sleep. <laughs> Crazy dog. <laughs> So now I know I know we we just reached kind of the critical mass with swords because uh, freedom has like two swords. Gundam Exia has like the big like you know metal sword. Let's go in the opposite direction. Gundam Heavy Arms, also one of my favorites. <laughs> what, is that from Seed? No, this is from Wing. Oh, that's from Wing. This man just got a big old Gatling gun for an arm. Yeah, and then his yeah, chest that's... opens into Gatling guns, and his shoulders open into missiles. So if Barrett was a Gundam. He would be Gundam Heavy Arms. He would be Gundam Heavy Arms, yeah. <laughs> Cloud would probably be Exia. Oh, that dude, Sephiroth that, might be Freedom. That would be fun. Assign each character what Gundam they would be. <laughs> Kate Sith would have, be God. I have another strike model. Oh, there we go. This is just the L strike, but this is like a hobby grade one. Strike is cool. Yo, freaking you and Zane streaming him painting 40k minis and you building a Gundam. That would be dope. <laughs> yeah. Where's this one? Oh, and then I got Wing Zero. I built one of these when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, so I had to get another one. So so out of all out of all these, which one which one are you gonna build first? I might build Wing Zero happen? first. I, I might I build Wing Zero first. I don't know yet. That, do you have a rough like estimate of how long kind of those smaller ones take to put together? I could do it in like probably an hour or two, I would think. Mm, okay. I also have uh, the mightiest of all. Cup Noodle. Great. The model kit. Yep, Cup Noodle model kit. 
The best Gundam. That's my that's my future Gundam collection. And then I got some up there. Those are like um they sell those at Target. They're just like nice figures, mm. like harder plastic. Yeah. I have the the freedom, of course. I sure, ordered sure. that from GameStop. Um and then I have the tall geese. Hold on. Oh god. See, I got my, my my freedom boy. Oh, there he is. Yeah, there he is. Lean with a rock with so it. So, like, the, the strike freedom, these parts come off and become guns. Yeah. Also, these are guns. <laughs> Everything is a gun. Everything is a gun. No, I should Hence, gun damn. It's a gun. He's got two of them right here. Guns. 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 Gun damn it. Well, now we're going to be demonetized on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> we're not monetized. You can't demonetize what isn't monetized. The... Exactly. And then this one's from Gundam Wing. I like this one. This one's the tall geese. This one's oh, he's like got a shield. Kind of a... Yeah, this one's just kind of a cool bastard. Like, he's like got this shield. big old fucking cannon. He's got, like, these jet packs. So in Gundam Wing... This thing was piloted by the mask guy, Zex Marquis. Uh, he's really cool. His name um, is his name is Sex Marquis? Zex. Z-E-C-H-S. Oh, Sex Zex. Marquis is a title that I'm putting in the chat. <laughs> okay, do that. So, M-A-R-Q-U-I-S. Yep, like the French. Um, yeah. So, the cool thing with the tall geese, I'm probably way too far from the mic. I'm going to sit down for a second. The cool thing in Wing with the tall geese is... It was a Gundam they made, but they didn't use it because I shouldn't say it was a Gundam. Technically, only like the G pilots have Gundams in that. But like Tall Geese was a mobile suit they made, but it was too fast and too powerful that like there were so many G forces on the body that they couldn't pilot it. Oh, OK. So like this thing was impossible to pilot. And so Zex Marquis got really pissed off at Hiro Yui the pilot of the wing Gundam, he got really pissed off and wanted to fight him square. So he got in this motherfucker and went to town and he became the pilot of the tall geese. And then they made a tall geese too, which was piloted by, I don't remember his first name. I think it was like Kushranada or something. Um, is, is it named the tall geese because it's primarily the same color scheme as a goose? I don't know why it's called the tall geese. <laughs> I don't remember. They probably say it in the show. I don't remember. Uh, but there was a Tall Geese 2. And then in the movie Endless Waltz, there's a Tall Geese 3. Once again, piloted by Zex Marquis. That's such a good name. My God. I know. I know. That's why he's great. <laughs> it's why he's so good. And it's why the Tall Geese is so cool. Gundam. He piloted it. It's why Gundam is so cool. <laughs> Robots. Who doesn't like giant robots? <laughs> you if you don't like person? giant robots, unsubscribe. <laughs> we somehow end Do up me with a favor. Subscriptions. Yeah, I know. Watch <laughs> our listenership goes down again. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so my my love for Gundam is once again on a massive upswing. Like an 89 degree angle. I gotta watch Iron Blooded Orphans at some point. Yeah, 50 episodes. <sighs> they're all kids. they're all usually 50 episodes. Between 40 and 50, from what I've the good, seen. Yeah, yeah, the good ones are usually. Yeah. I mean, Destiny or Gundam Seed used to be 50, but they cut out two filler episodes of that were just recaps. Mm -hmm. So that's down yeah. to I think 48, and then I think Seed Destiny is 49. Yeah, um, but and... it, that one's good because they took the so Seed Destiny had an ending and it was fine, but then they made a final plus version of the ending, which is just a 45 minute version of the last episode, which had a much better ending that led into the movie that they were supposed to make. Uh, so yeah. now they just made it part of the HD remaster of the show. Oh, okay. Gotcha. If yeah, you're going to watch and... Gundam Seed, watch the HD remaster. Yeah. And I saw that they 
for the original Gundam, Gundam like 79 or whatever, they at one point condensed the series into three movies that are all on Netflix as well. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, I got I got my, my anime work cut out for me, for sure. I remember the sure. only season of Gundam I didn't like was G Gundam, but yeah. it has some of the most quotable moments in all of Gundam. That's the one where, you know, like the guy is like, like cheesy dub quotable moments or like actual kinda, good no i moments. mean good quotable moments because that's oh, okay. the one where he's like this hand is telling me to defeat you <laughs> take this my love my anger and all of my sorrow <laughs> <laughs> shining <laughs> like burning it's so rush. good no burning finger is from g gundam <laughs> it's actually called burning finger yeah, it's Shining Finger, and then he gets the Burning Gundam, and so it becomes Burning Finger. That's he a medical puts, condition. But it's a whole, he does the whole hand. The whole hand glows. It's not just a boop. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anime, yeah, man. G, G Gundam is weird. <laughs> it's good, but it's weird. G Gundam's weird because it's like a world tournament, and every country has a Gundam representing them. And so, like, Canada has a fucking lumberjack with chainsaw hands. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> it's just, legit. It's a lumberjack. I'm pretty sure it has a Like is the on. is the paint I job think it's like, like a, a plaid? grizzly Gundam? I shit you uh, not. Hold on. Uh I need to find this real quick. So, did they just make one entire series a tournament arc for Gundam? <laughs> no, hold on. Lumber Gundam is what it was called. Lumber and the, Gundam. Yo, the man was a fucking lumberjack. Just Lumber gu- Look up Lumber Gundam. That's just fun to say, first of all. I know, but look at look up the pilot too. Oh, I'm so disappointed he's not in plaid. The pilot, I think, is. Maybe. I don't remember. Oh no, he just has a he just has a beanie and a yeah, jacket a with ripped off sleeves. Yeah, and he's got his they all have like these weird suits that they wear. Oh my god, Lumber Gundam. Lumber Gundam is fucking cool. God, that's one of the most fun things to say. Wait, hold on. Didn't one of them... Is, is, uh, is there... I don't know if this Gundam is no, real yeah, that okay. has a windmill on the I front think of it. it. <laughs> yes, I think that's the Holland one. Um, oh, my... So and Grizzly there's a fish Gun- one. So, I think in the dub, it was Grizzly Gundam. Yeah, it was originally named Lumber Gundam, which was changed to Grizzly Gundam for North American viewers. So, it's Lumber Gundam in Japan, and it's Grizzly Gundam in the U.S. I think Grizzly Gundam is a better name, but Lumber Gundam is hilarious. Oh, my God. All of these are ridiculous. Yeah, Neo Holland's robot was known as Nether Gundam, but it's called the Hurricane Gundam, and it's got a fucking windmill. I'm looking at all of these now. You say, is this? Did you say this is G Gundam? G Gundam. Oh, my God. Some of these. the Of course, the freaking... Kowloon Gundam, Tequila Gundam, Samurai, the Matador Gundam, which is just has a bull head for a body. Mermaid Gundam. Yep, Denmark is just a fish. Yo, Tequila Gundam has a fucking fancy hat. The Mandala Gundam is just a Gundam in a bell that is also a Jack in the Box. What is this show? Noble Gundam, which is just Sailor Moon. Oh, uh, Pharaoh Gundam. You know what that looks like. Listen, G Gundam sucks ass, but it's also like a, a beautiful dis- catastrophe that Dude, like, you can't look away from. Zeus Gundam from Neo Greece. Oh my God, that is amazing. Well, let me look. Holy up. Zeus Gundam. Zeus he has a Gundam, Gundam beard. <laughs> That's great. Neo India Snake Gundam. It's just a Gundam with a snake head. That's great. Yeah, Zeus Gundam is okay. There's a mummy New- Gundam. Yep, Jester Gundam from Neo Portugal. Yeah, Pharaoh Gundam. Literally... I have I have the toy of that somewhere. Jester Gundam is just a, a like a jester hat with a Gundam head popping out of it. Yes. <laughs> yes. What? This is amazing. This oh Viking Neo Norway Viking Gundam. It's just a centaur, but instead of a horse lower half, it's a boat. <laughs> Oh, and the biggest yikes. Gundam Zebra from Neo Kenya. Woof. Oh, Holy... fuck. I... Oh. The Zeus Gundam thing it led me down a dangerous rabbit hole and it suggested something from Amazon. And oh, now I'm looking at it, a fucking... Is it a Zeus Gundam model kit? No, it's a Wing Gundam Zero. 
Wing Gundam Zero is really fucking cool because it's Wing Zero, but with angel wings. Hold on. G Gundam might be my first Gundam series. I mean, <laughs> there's no sex marquee, but like, you know, it's still pretty good. Holy crap. That's amazing. Oh, fuck Epion. I remember Epion. Oh, we can't turn this into a shopping episode for our audio listeners. <laughs> sure we can. <laughs> There's nothing stopping us. <laughs> but yeah, fucking, you got to look at that though. Cause fucking wing Gundam zero is, or wing, wing zero custom is really cool. With his fucking wings and shit. Mobile like, fighter G Gundam received mediocre television ratings. Yeah, because it sucked. <laughs> the overall ratings for G Gundam were higher than that of the previous series, Mobile Suit Victory Gundam, and slightly lower than the following series, Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. Slightly lower. Woof. This looks amazing. Yeah, I'm going to have to either read it or watch it. One of the two. Oh, but yeah, it's been. Oh, hold on. You need to watch this. It's 26 seconds. We're in the middle of the podcast? Yes, 26 seconds. <laughs> and this will sell you on G Gundam. You just, you got to do it. I'll fill it. Yep. Go I, ahead. Sent I'm him, watching it. I sent him the Shining Finger for anybody wondering. <laughs> it's so good. Go, 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 go. Yeah, if I do watch this, it's pretty good. It will probably be subbed. <laughs> oh. No, you have to experience oh. the beautiful disaster that I did. Oh, the God. dub is so like mediocre. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Gundam oh. is amazing. And everything it has given us has been a positive. Everything. There are no downsides to anything Gundam has done. Even bad Gundam is good. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <sighs> Gundam oh. is so beautiful. <laughs> Genuinely, though, if I was going to suggest one to start with, um, Seed is good because it's a retelling of the original, just in like a, its own setting. Um, I would say Double O because it's basically a like modernization of Wing, but I would just tell you to watch Wing and then watch Double O. Double O is good. Season two is not as good as season one. And then the movie is awful. Uh, I hate the movie. Here we go. Gundam, where new fans should start with the classic mecha franchise. It's probably going to tell you wing. Method number one. Oh, these are methods. No. So method number one, follow the Amuro Ray arc. Yeah, Amuro. He's the original. Amuro. He's the original method. Gundam pilot. He is what method. Kira is based on. Gotcha. Method two, watch Gundam chronologically. Method three, the spirit of Gundam? What? Oh, I get. I guess uh, for Gundam fans who don't want to jump feet first into the UC timeline is Gundam Wing for a starting point. What did I just say? Method X, <laughs> what not to do. Watch some of the weird OVAs. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Start with G Gundam. Don't do that. Yeah. Start um, with, dude, I'm rooting no, for Windmill Gundam. I'll tell you that Wing is a good starting point because the animation's really good, but it's also, it's still got that classic like 80s vibe to it. It's before, mm -hmm. like Seed was the first one that really kind of transitioned to the modern Gundam look, the cleaner lines and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So Wing, you can still go backwards from. So, so how much of Gundam have you watched? I have watched all of Seed and Seed Destiny. I have watched all of Wing. I have watched all of Double O. Uh, I have seen bits and pieces. I have seen like a good chunk of 08 The Mess Team, mm -hmm. uh, which I do like, and I need to finish watching that at some point. It's just, it was always too expensive, and then I yeah. forgot about it once I could afford it. it. Um, it, it I'm going to go down a list here. And I'm going to tell you seen it, some yeah. of it. I'm going to tell you all of it, some of it, or none of it. Yeah. And this is, this is an old list from 2015 from anime news network where they gave a brief summary of each thing and said, if it was worth watching, yes or no. So here we go. Gundam, the origin. 
I'm assuming that's OG. Uh, and no, it's an origin story for the one year war. Um, this original anime video begins when Char is still a child. Oh yeah. Char is the, Char is the original masked, uh, like, uh, antagonist of Gundam. Oh, okay. This might Char, be an OG, Char right? Asnable. Oh, okay. Um, they do say it's worth watching it. M, uh, MS Igloo, UC0079. It's a three-part DVD focusing on the Xeon's engineering team and their rush to create technology. That sounds like you're talking about movies right now. I don't know. It's, it's all the movies and series are mixed in with each other. Mobile okay. Suit Gundam, the original. I Some of it. Yes. I've seen some of it. Um, the 8th MS team. Some of it they say that's a good one worth the watch yeah that's a good one because it's really like like they don't really fly in that one that's like guerrilla mm. warfare gundam like that's a lot of like tread based gundams that's a lot of fighting and using buildings for cover um that's a that's a really good gundam series gotcha um this looks like it's a short six episode series war in the pocket which they say is worth watching stardust memory which is the precursor to zeta gundam i've never seen say, zeta gundam and then Zeta Gundam, they say it is worth watching, uh, follows the events of Mobile Suit Gundam with a new protagonist, Camille, and a new redemption storyline for Char. I've never seen Zeta. Um, why it's worth watching? It's critique on the Federation's less than cool policies after the war, blurring the lines between good and evil in the process of presenting a complex, multi-sided conflict. Gundam ZZ? Char's counterattack? Yeah. Char's counterattack. Um, Gundam Unicorn? I've heard of that. I've heard, I've seen some of that. I watched like the first three episodes. Mm-hmm. I need to see more. Um, Cause that F- one. Yeah. Gundam unicorn, I think takes place in the original timeline. Yeah. It starts and I in think UC zero, 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 one. Char follows or someone the, based on Char is in it. Yeah. Follows the last scion of the Republic of Zeon and serves as a capstone to the universal century. Yes. Um, Gundam F ninety one. I want to watch was... that one. F Gundam F ninety one. That the, the the main Gundam from that one is really cool. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it was originally planned as a fifty episode TV show, then a twelve episode TV show, and then finally released as a movie. They say it's not worth watching because of the pacing from all the changes. But we yeah, but say. the Gundam I think in it is really cool. Um, Victory Gundam. No, they say seen. it is not worth watching. G Savior. I... It, that was a live action movie. <laughs> Well, that should tell you all you need to know. Yep. Okay, so, and then after Colony, Gundam Wing. So, yeah, each of these is, so the Universal Century is all of the original Gundam. So that's all stuff that takes place in the Amuro Ray Gundam timeline. Mm. Um, After Colony is, I think, only Wing. Gotcha. Okay. So, so like... So every every spin-off Gundam has its own universe that it takes place in that is not Universal. So Universal Century is the main timeline and right, everything right. else is a spin-off or reboot of that depending gotcha. on what okay. series it is. Yeah. Uh, or it, it's so, it's it's a it's a separate entity. Yeah, so um After Colony which is Gundam Wing which they say worth watching hurts yes. to say but no. They no, said why they're wrong. They said members of the tsunami generation may remember falling in love with it, but with poor pacing and a weak plot, the Gundam wing older fans remember has not aged well on a rewatch today. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I mm. only saw bits and pieces of Gundam wing as a child was not a fan as an adult. Finally watched through the whole thing beginning to end. Loved it. Absolutely. Watch Gundam wing and then watch the movie endless waltz because yep, endless waltz one. is fucking awesome that movie fucking slaps i should no, i shit you not that movie is fucking excellent next up the cosmic era what to watch first gundam seed first in the timeline worth watching maybe yes next up gundam seed destiny worth watching no less but yes less but yes Listen, it says, Gundam Seed Destiny. So I uh, don't don't even listen. To that. I'm going to tell you about Gundam Seed Destiny. Okay. <laughs> so Gundam Seed has its story and it's really good. Gundam Seed Destiny starts off by telling the exact same story from a different character's perspective. 
but it's the exact same events and everything and a very similar mobile suit where Gundam Seed Destiny gets really good is in the back half when it starts to make so basically, it starts off, Gundam Seed Destiny starts off, and you, like, the main character of Destiny is a survivor from one of the big conflicts in the original Gundam Seed, and he joins Zaft. And so the beginning, like, the first half of Destiny is Zaft as the heroes, just like the first half of Gundam Seed is, like, you know, the Earth Forces, and you're the hero for the Earth Forces. The difference is... Zaft seems like the good guy in this one, whereas in Seed, the Earth Forces never seemed like the good guy, even though you were fighting, even though Kira was fighting for them. Um, so Destiny, the first half, is like all pro Zaft. And then as they gradually bring the characters back from the first Seed into the mix and they start to become the main characters, the show becomes incredible. And they do a lot of really cool things with it. The back half of that show has one of the best Gundam fights you will ever watch involving my boy, the freedom. It is an exceptional duel, dude. It is, it is just one dude. And he is just like, I don't, it, it's literally that scene from Gundam from, from Dragon Ball Z abridged. I will, I will kill as many people as I have to, as long as you are one of them, uh, except like he will go through as many pieces of his Gundam as he has to, as long as the freedom dies. Uh, and it's one of the best fights in it's, it's maybe the best fight in that series. Maybe there might be one better fight in Gundam seed. Um, but it's one of the best fights in Gundam. It's such a great fight. Like the court, like the visuals of it, like the moment to moment, like the pacing of the fight is really good. There's like this really like incredible intensity on both sides where the freedom's got like his back against the wall and the other dude just does not stop. Just unrelenting. And he's just like, send me this shit. Send me that shit. Get this shit ready. Do this shit. Die, motherfucker, die. And I'm just like, holy shit. Like I'm rooting for the freedom, but this is fucking cool. <laughs> The freedom is losing and I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good. And then from then on, the show is just fucking phenomenal, even though it again continues to just be Gundam Seed, but from reverse perspectives. Right. Gotcha. And that part is really annoying, but like it's ultimately really good. And I can't really like fault them for it because it ended up being really good. And I still really like it. Fair enough. Just Shin Asuka as a character is insufferable and deserves no <laughs> happiness in this world. <laughs> Next timeline is Our Century, the only Gundam that takes place in the same universe as us. Oh, which one's that? Um, there are two short shows. Um, what it's about in the near future on Earth, people of all ages build Gunpla, plastic uh... Gundam models, and use high tech arenas to make them battle for fun and profit. <laughs> Um, so the first one, there are two shows. One is Gundam Build Fighters, yeah, which they say is worth watching. There are a lot of inside jokes and cameos and references to other Gundam shows. Um, and then Gundam Build Fighters Try, which is the sequel to it. Yeah, that makes sense. And then One Shot Centuries, After War, Gundam X, um, Future Century, Mobile Fighter G Gundam. There you go. Oh my god. Um, Anno Domini, Gundam Double O. Double O is good. Double O, again, that... Double O is another one where the first season is really good. Gundam Double O, I think, is actually directed by the same guy who did the original Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, okay. Which, yeah, they... yeah, it's, yeah, they it's say, really they good say here... and then stops being good. Yeah, they say here that it's not worth watching. It starts off with a lot of promise, but the first season is decent, only to propel you to a terrible second season. They are correct. Uh, the first season is really good, and you could watch that first season and stop, and if you are not me, you can be very satisfied with that life. <laughs> but I am me, and I have to see what happens next because I yep. can't leave any you know, dangling threads. And so I watch season two, which is good until it becomes not. Yeah. And then it just stays not good. And then they made that insufferable movie where the main Gundam, the most powerful Gundam ever built, and it does nothing. Except make a flower oh. in space. space and flowers. then the pilot glows. 
Dope. And that's the movie <laughs> in the end. The best character, Dope. though, the best part of season two of that is there is this guy in season one who just like he fucking like he he professes his love for the Gundam because he's just like he's like the only way I can explain this feeling, this rivalry he has with the Gundams is like the only way I can explain this feeling is true love. And like he goes crazy. And then in season two, he comes back as this dude with like this Bushido mask. And he goes by Mr. Bushido. And he's just like, I'm going to fuck up those Gundams. But he's like, smile. Like he just wants to fight Gundams now. Like this dude doesn't give a fuck about anything. He just wants, but he's not like crazy. He's just like, I'm here to fight Gundams. I don't give a fuck about you. I don't give a fuck about the mission. I want to fight the fucking Gundams. And it's, it's it's amazing. He's great. Mr. Bushido is great. And the only reason season two is worth watching. And then he's also in the movie and he's the only redeeming quality of that movie. Main ca- Very like side characters with blonde hair and Gundam. Traditionally excellent. Mula Flaga, Gundam Seed. Excellent. Graham Aker. Excellent. What was the first one? Mula Flaga? Mula Flaga. M-O-U. It's like rip a splitter. Yeah, um, Mula, only- Mula Flaga is a real G. Yeah, he only, makes the impossible he, possible. There we go. We're down to the last three. Um, Gundam Age. I'm not sure if that. you've heard of that. No. Um, apparently, level five was involved. That's interesting. They say it's not worth watching. Reconquista in G, which they've been humanity's entered a time of universal peace based on an anti-tech religion. One young man decides to pilot a mobile suit of mysterious origin, and then oh. the, the last. I think yeah. I know what that one is. Is the main character like some kid with like white hair or whatever? No, it looks like brown hair and like a Maybe. like a light blue um color, light blue and red Gundam. Like a sky blue. It's interesting. I might know what you're talking about. I, I a then, lot of these I remember honestly from Dynasty Warriors Gundam. Make another Dynasty Warriors Gundam game, please. Mm, yo, if I start getting into Gundam, I'm gonna want to play Dynasty Warriors Gundam. Does it have co op? <laughs> Local game on they're on the ps3 and 360 i have so much dlc i bought mr bushido <laughs> Good. i fucking bought mr i play as next marquee and mr bushido in all of those games <laughs> um here we go and then the last the last thing that they list which might be my sleeper pick just from the brief description is Iron turn Blade a Blade. gundam oh turn a is the one i was thinking of that one has the kid with like the white hair I think I don't. They don't show the oh. the protagonist, but it has music by Yoko Kano, who did the music for Cowboy Bebop. It has mecha designs by Sid Mead, who was the concept artist for Blade Runner, Aliens, and Tron. Like yo, that's they, they have a character named Jim, but G Y M. That's okay. I'm no longer on board. Yeah, this is okay. This is the one I thought you were talking about last time. Okay. Yeah, Turn A Gundam, I'm vaguely familiar with. I've actually yeah. heard Turn A is really good. Yeah, that's that's what they're saying here as well. 50 episodes. Wonder I think Turn, Turn A, a Gundam, Gundam is weird because I think it's like a war with like people on the moon. There's some like weird moon shit happening. Hmm. Turn A Gundam. Turn A Gundam is weird because he looks like he has a fabulous mustache. You're I mean, probably seeing it now. It sounds right up my alley. <laughs> Man's has a mustache. Where can I watch Turn A Gundam? I don't know, dude. Yo, where where do I watch you? Blu-ray. Stop it. Blu-ray collection one. It's only fifty one dollars. And it and it's short. Uh. It's, just turn a no okay it's turn a gundam this is a great podcast Ooh, mobile suit gundam f91 blu-ray i could get it tomorrow where to watch turn a gundam this is a weird episode of the yo podcast. no I, yeah i don't give a shit look at this this turned into <laughs> anagen fuck you're welcome uh, uranium <laughs> dude look at this thing and tell me it doesn't look cool Gundam F91. It's a cool little mobile suit. Yeah. You got some I get, style I'm, and some swag. I'm not going to lie. I get a lot of mobile suits confused because a lot of them, I feel like, have the white and blue color scheme. 
the, yeah, but that's that's always usually the main. Ca- oh, and this is this is new Gundam. So this is the one that um, like Freedom kicks its ass. New Gundam also had the Dragoon system. So like those like wings it has like fly off. Hmm. New Gundam is cool. Don't get me wrong, but it's no freedom. The freedom is the freedom, and it's beautiful. <laughs> um, there's a lot of cool ones like the Zazabi. Uh, that's Char's Gundam. And I can't remember if it's Char or Char. Like I think you, I, I feel like historically I remember people pronouncing it as like Char Asnable. Oh motherfucker! What Amazon has that model kit I bought for seventy seven dollars. The master grade. Yeah, you supported local business. I know. I supported a local business. It's fine. <sighs> I just, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Of course. It's okay. I need somebody to turn this into like a full size poster. That's what I need. I need a very large poster of just the freedom in this pose. Oops. Oh man! That's not what I um, we're gonna talk video games in the second half. There's gonna be sure. Game talk. I won't have anything to talk about for video games because I literally haven't played anything. That's fine. <laughs> I've just been watching anime and reading manga. That's that's fine. That's fine. I mean, uh, we can just turn this into Anagen. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's it'll be Gundam Anagen Part Three. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Part Three or Part Two? No, we already did it too. Remember. We, did we had an episode. We had an episode a while ago. It was named something funny. Hold on, let me find it. So I remember doing the first one, and then I no, we never. So it wasn't an official two. It was named that way. Uh, hold on, uh, I'm gonna find it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, I remember that uh, episode. Never see. put it past us to do worse than this. Yep. Yep. Oh, I remember biodegradable grappling. Oh, that because that was last week. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that was recent. Yeah, that's why I remember it. Ha ha. Ha ha. Um, where the fuck was it? Uh, it was some like oh, ridiculous name. Almost back to Mag was a good one. <laughs> Nobody probably got half gen podcast Anagen episode two. Uh, hold on, what was it? Bulk replace. I'm not replacing anything. What the fuck? <laughs> I just want to see what the full title was. Okay. Half Gen Podcast, Anna Gen Episode 2, Baby Bandolier. I forgot about the Baby Bandolier. The Baby Bandolier. (laughs) Yep. Remember the Bandolier for my babies. Yep. I got one. I I just need enough to fill out a Bandolier. My baby. (laughs) It's right here. My little baby. My baby Baby Smolin. Um, oh man you want to just take a break here and we'll come back sure and we'll talk yeah. okay yep. we'll catch you in uh the next uh segment yep. uh, we'll see you then okay bye all right guys welcome back to the half gen podcast we are past the antigen portion of the sh- no we're not we so you think about perfect you don't know you're Um, missing out on audio listeners we'll talk anime after let's talk about some games sure stanley parable ultra deluxe came out today as of this recording it finally came out i have been waiting three years for this game there is going to be some light spoiler talk i'm not going to go into like I want to talk about one storyline that takes place in this, and then I'm going to touch on a couple things. Um, The most important thing is the core of the Stanley Parable experience is still in this game and playable, but it is... So, I have done things in the Stanley Parable where originally, like, I went through my first playthrough, uh, my first run, I did everything exactly the way the narrator wanted me to do it. So I got my first clear. Then I started kind of fucking around, going, doing the side stuff. I did the baby mini game, and 
that was still good. The baby mini game, though. Remember how he used to put you in Minecraft after that? Vaguely. He doesn't do that anymore. Mm. He put me in Firewatch. <laughs> then when he realized it was an open world game, he put me in Rocket League. <laughs> and not just knockoff Rocket League. It said Rocket League. And he dropped the ball and I scored a goal. <laughs> And then he said, if you manage to get out of this map, I'll be very impressed. And I got out. <laughs> um, but I got to a point where there was a door and the door said new content on it. And so okay. I went in and it was really dumb. It was just, it took me on two elevators and it took me to a jump circle where it gave me like 30 something jumps and I used them all. Uh, and then he's like, the narrator's like, that's it. That's all the new content. <laughs> So I go through it again, and there's this big neon sign that says new, new content. Um, and he kicks out like a vent. He's like, Stanley, come here. I want to show you something. And he takes me to what's basically this big, like, expo hall. And it says the Stanley Parable 2. And it's just a bunch of, like, bullshit features. It's like the button that says your name and you press it and it only says Jim and it goes into this thing of, like, pretend you're Jim, okay? Now really believe you're Jim. Now push the button. And it's like, wow, that was amazing, wasn't it? And I pushed it too much and he took it away because um, it was too much Jim. Uh, there was a, a bottomless pit uh, that was not bottomless, but that was also not the best part. Uh, because at one point I got stuck in it and the narrator left and music started playing and the pit started going down and I was able to change things such as my perspective, my reality, my character. Uh, and it got nuts. It was fucking trippy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the best part is they added this bucket of reassurance and you pick it up and you carry it around. And then when I completed that part, when I started a new run, the bucket was there. And when you pick up the bucket, there is brand new dialogue for every action you take while holding the bucket. And so I went to the broom closet and there is a whole new broom closet sequence with the bucket. <laughs> And it's all about the bucket. Like, literally, like, you know how, you know, Stanley took the door on the left. And you go in the right one, and it's like, Stanley wants to go see the break room. And it's like, the bucket was calling to him. It said to go to the break room. And then you get in the break room. He's like, the bucket was right. This room is beautiful. It is gorgeous. And, like, everything he did. And then you leave the room. And he's like, Stanley and his bucket took the first door on the left. You know, <laughs> everything's about the bucket. I went to a, uh, a bucket uh, intervention. Uh, because the bucket, they got tired of me having the bucket. I would not give up my bucket though. Uh, and then I might've destroyed reality somehow with the bucket. And then I got put back on the adventure line. Yeah. Um, it's one of those games you really need to play. <laughs> it's so I I've done a couple of like the old runs and seen them and they're really cool. Um, but some of the new stuff is like crazy. Uh, and basically now when I start up the game, it doesn't say the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. It says the Stanley Parable 2. So I think I'm playing, all along. <laughs> I think I'm playing a sequel. <laughs> I don't know, but I might be playing the Stanley Parable 2. That's what the game tells me on the main menu. <laughs> Uh, the narrator made a new menu and he told me to check it out. And it says the Stanley parable with a number two. And when I start the game, I like, I got the adventure line and the first adventure line said the Stanley parable Two adventure line, even though yep. it was the quest from the first game, it said it had the two. On it. Perfect. <laughs> I don't even know what I haven't seen yet. That's the crazy part is like, I don't know what I haven't seen. And everything they do, like all of the original endings now have bucket themed endings. There's collectibles in the game now. And the narrator specifically tells you there is nothing for getting these. <laughs> you will get no reward. Please collect these. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
pretty and then good. like the the meeting room now is like dedicated to the collectibles and there's like writing on the boards they're like what are these who's taking these pictures how <laughs> like why do they float <laughs> um it's incredible, man. Like, it, it, you know, at first it was cool being back in it and seeing like, ah, oh, the old funny stuff, the gags and whatever. But then like when the game really starts opening up to the new content, it's just like, wow, they really like fucking outdid themselves. Like they really went out there and kind of maybe made a sequel. I don't know. No. It's nuts. Like, I loved being in the broom closet with the bucket. And it was like, the broom closet says it wants the bucket, Stanley. It says the bucket belongs to it. So he put a, a sticker on it that says property of Stanley. He's like, there you go. Now no one will be able to take your bucket from you. You will always know this is your bucket. And then he put a sticker of a bucket on it. And he's like, now you'll always know that this is a bucket. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Um. God damn it. Like it's it's so stupid and so funny and I love it. And I kind of didn't want to put it down. I like I'm really I really hope they do other stuff. Like not that I don't want them to do more Stanley Parable, but like I'm just saying I want to see what their project after this is. Like mm. where the hell do they go from here? Because they took an already awesome game in the Stanley Parable and then they made the same game with new stuff and better. Right. Right. And like so much dumb stuff. Like, and then like, you know, some people, I know some people like don't look at achievements cause they don't want to like spoil stuff. You should definitely look at some of the achievements because if you go to do them, the game realizes you're doing them. And it's like, I'm not just going to give you an achievement for that. That's stupid. Uh, and it's just like, go, go earn it. And it like sends you on a quest to get that achievement. <laughs> And it's so dumb, and I love it. The Stanley, God, the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. You have to buy it, or it might be the Stanley Parable Two. I don't know. Maybe they're making a Stanley Parable Two. I don't know. But when you find the bottomless pit, keep going into it. It's, it's maybe my favorite part of that whole game so far. <laughs> it is unreal. <laughs> I cannot explain the things I saw. They added a skip button and that turned into a whole thing uh, that involved like space time and nonsense. Um, they had a big thing in the room with the sequel. They said all your favorite characters are back and they showed the baby, but it's the head on the, on the body of a man in a suit. And it said the baby's grown up. <laughs> <laughs> But it's just the fucking baby. <laughs> it's got the same like wood behind it and everything. Yep. They just cut off the head of the model and put it on some Photoshop like random generic dude in a white shirt and a black tie. The baby's all grown up. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's it's amazing and I love it. And I want more Stanley Parable. God, this game is so good. Um fucking hell man jesus uh i uh it's, it's weird because like i kind of want to play it again but i also kind of like i played it for three <laughs> i played it for three hours already holy shit hold on i want to see how much i played the original i played the original for five hours <laughs> I've already played this one for three hours. I haven't even done half of the original shit again. <laughs> what the fuck? I do need to log into the original at some point, though, because there's an achievement for. Wait, there's an achievement. Play the Stanley Parable for the entire duration of a Tuesday. What? How do I even do that? <laughs> Oh, I need to hold on. I need to unlock an achievement real quick. Uh, it's called Go Outside, and it's Don't Play the Stanley Parable for five years. I'm about to unlock that real quick. Okay. It, just, it, it needs to be done real quick. Go Outside. Perfect. Alt F4. Okay. Apparently, Alt F4 doesn't work. Fantastic. Um,. Yeah, so Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. 
it's I think like thirty three percent off if you own the original, so you get a discount. But it's like it's so much more stuff that they're selling it as its own game. So they basically rebuilt the whole game for mm. Ultra Deluxe. Nice. Because the original Stanley Parable, I'm just looking it up real quick, is less than two gigs. Ultra Deluxe is just over seven. So that should give you some perspective on the kind of content we're dealing with now. Um, <laughs> it's a great, it's a great game. You guys should play it. Um, in other news of great games, uh, I have been playing more Vampire Survivors. Uh, they just had a big. They they've had multiple. They said, like, yeah, we're going to slow down a little bit on, like, new content drops as they keep releasing new characters, like, every week or two uh, and mm -hmm. new items and new combos. So I've just been going through that, like, you know, once a week. I just boot it up, look at a bunch of the achievements I don't have, and I just – because it tells you, like, you know, do this to unlock this. So I've just been unlocking a bunch of stuff, and that's I, – I played for, like, four hours the other day, and I just unlocked a bunch of shit. Yeah. Nice. I fuck, that game is so – good too like that's another like great game of just like turn it on don't realize how long you've been playing it <laughs> yeah and then yeah. just like try and return to your life after that <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah vampire survivors continues to be the best three dollars you can spend on steam bar none it's three dollars why haven't it. you bought this yet. yet no yeah not you but i'm just saying like why you listening, why haven't you bought this yet? Like, come on, you're crazy. Oh, fuck, Demon Gaze is on Steam. I remember that. I reviewed that. Um, I have also been playing Elden Ring, got back into that in a big way. Mm -hmm. uh, I put about mm -hmm. 26 hours into that this past month. Elden Ring continues to be a really good game that I just don't like as much as I thought I would. Yeah. Yeah. What about it's, it? I don't know. I wish I knew. It's just, it's, there's something about it that it's just not like, I don't have that draw to it. Like I had to like dark souls and bloodborne mm -hmm. yeah. and like, it's really cool to run around. So I I've been playing it pretty much almost exclusively in co-op now. Uh, and that has been where I've been having a lot of fun is just playing with my buddies uh, and just kind of treating it like Monster Hunter. Just run around, and just, you know, kill the boss. And then I help them kill their boss. And then we go and we kill, we play until we kill another boss. And then we summon each other again and we go and we play until we kill another boss. And it's so much easier to do that than it was in Dark Souls 3 because you don't have those zones now where it's like, okay, well, you have to get through this whole part by yourself now. Uh, because for whatever reason you can't summon there it's not like that the game is just like look you can summon there's weird like fog walls sometimes that'll come up when you're transitioning zones where it's like hey you're going to enter this new area and it won't let like you have to basically they leave you walk into the area and then you resummon them oh okay so it's not like it's not like a trick or anything and usually like anytime you enter a new area there's a um a grace nearby but you know it, it's good i've been using the katana i just got moon veil uh which gives me is a katana but it has like a wave attack you can do with like the special ability uh mm -hmm. so i got a lot of uh, sort uh whatever intelligence so now i can do like sorceries and stuff too which is kind of cool i don't usually do that stuff in these games so that's been kind of a cool new thing to be dabbling with uh katanas are really fun bleed is very strong and so I've just been kind of going around being a bleedy boy and cutting everybody up with the katanas. Uh, I, I mean, I have fun when I play it, especially when I play in co-op, but like, I just, I've lost, I have almost no desire to play that game by myself at this point. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, some people are going to listen to that and they're going to be like, ah, oh, blasphemy. And I'm just Fake be like, fan. Hey, guess what? Don't care what you think. <laughs> <laughs> crazy how i'm the one playing the game I, in fact i will i love when people are like like i i remember one time i was playing the original dark souls uh like the, not the original dark souls but the remaster of the original dark souls and i was playing it with somebody 
and someone in my stream is like, yo, like stop. Like they told me to stop doing something. I was like, what? And they were like, you're just playing the game for him. Stop killing shit. And I'm just like, what? Why? We're playing together. He's like, you're doing everything. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And he's like, you're doing all the work. This isn't even fun. And I'm just like, who are you to tell me this isn't fun? He's just like, get out of here. Dude was a dick anyway. <laughs> but uh, yeah, people really kind of get up their own ass with those Souls games. And I'm going to tell you here, get over it. Um, I well, Well, I am one of those people who believes that not every game needs to be easy and that there is merit to difficulty in games in a game like this. Uh, I will also say that like anything that's in the game is fair game. Mm -hmm. and yeah. if co-op is just that easy then it's supposed to be and if summoning spirits to help you fight is that easy then it's supposed to be it's crazy yeah. how that works just utilizing the mechanics of the game and then it's the same people who are like you know they they invade like low level zones with end game gear and then they're just like Yo, why would you alt F4? Oh, I'm sorry. You mean when you came in with your endgame weapons that I can't fight? That like you're you're you have a shield that I can't even hurt you through, and you're just like, you have the audacity to bag? And it's like, and then you're telling me, why you bring why are you bringing people in? Fight me, coward. It's just like, no. Fuck off. <laughs> Don't get mad at me stuff, when I keep when I keep summoning the Burger King to kick your ass. Don't get mad at me. Have it your way. <laughs> Sneak King. I literally play with the Burger King. That's how Tony plays. This guy looks like the Burger King. And so that's just and he has a sword that just like he he has an ability that just like destroys enemies in an area. So I tell him it's the fr uh, the, the the flame broiler. Mm. Uh, and so anytime he uses it, it's just have it your way, you know, because, <laughs> you know, Burger King. Yeah. <sighs> I wish I liked Elden Ring more. Yeah, I really do. I, I wish that game clicked with me on, on a different level, but it <laughs> did, just did, it's... did it take did it take a long time for any of the other Souls games to click for you? Well, so Bloodborne was the first one that clicked with me enough that I wanted to finish it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did, and then Dark Souls three grabbed me pretty much right away. Like yeah. I loved Dark Souls three all the way. Um, that game was so good, and I did a good chunk of that solo. Um, and then on New Game Plus, I did like all of it solo, uh, so I could keep up with my buddies who were playing like new characters and stuff. Um, so I like Dark Souls three a lot. I like Bloodborne a lot. And just something about Elden Ring, like part of it is just like because it's so open, it's just like I maybe it's just I don't have the focus. Like Dark Souls was good about just like you know where you're going next for the most part. Um, especially like Dark Souls 3, like there were options and there were secret areas and stuff like that. But for the most part, you're on, you know, you're going towards something important at all times. Right, and in right. Elden Ring. It's just like I could be going towards something important or I could just be going towards something that's going to kick my ass and I don't understand why. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, and so it, it, that's part of it of just like I don't want to walk into something that's going to kick my ass because I'm going to just bang my head against it for like two hours until I get mad and want to stop playing. Because that's just right. how I operate. No. Yeah. Fair <sighs> enough. But... It's still going to win every award under the sun at the end of the year. Absolutely. So. And I'm not saying that's undeserved. Um, but yeah, it, it's probably not going to be my choice for a lot of those. But uh, otherwise, I think I played like a little more PUBG and like Apex this month. Uh, Apex is still fun. Uh, PUBG is still okay. Um, it's either really fun or really awful, uh, depending on the lobby. Huh. Uh, but I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I played recently, cause it's not on steam. Uh, I, th I swear I played something. No, I talked about tunic last month. I haven't actually played tunic since then. 
I did purchase some games. Okay. What do you got? Hey. I've got Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles X here. Uh, definitive Xeno, edition. Definitive edition. Uh, I have Xenoblade Chronicles 2 uh, on my Switch downloaded because you can only get that digitally now, apparently. Well, that's um, weird. Yeah. It just doesn't exist in physical forms. Maybe they just stopped making it too early or something. I don't know. But, um, yeah, so I bought that. So I want to try and play these. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, especially since they moved up the release date of three. Yeah. <laughs> that that did the, not help. <laughs> the struggle. Yep. Um, so I got those in the pipe. Um, my Retroid finally arrived this saga comes to a conclusion hey uh, there we go the spiraling disaster catastrophe of that got my hard case here and i've got my orange pocket two here uh which i was looking stuff up and it looks like nfl does not work on here uh yeah. so i'm just gonna give up on ps2 games on this and yep. try and figure out a different way um yep. which is a shame i hope it runs on steam deck I bet it will. That'd be nice. I bet it will. Oh. But uh, yeah, my nice little uh, there it is, orange and black. Look hey, it's Ross. me. You're Ross playing me on the, the retroid. Yeah, I'm playing you on the retroid. Okay, hold on. I'm pulling the trigger. Oh, that's the jump button. Okay, what's this one do? What the fuck was that? A chip clip. Oh, okay. What does this one do? Okay, now I press the other one again, the first one again. Okay, uh, what if I push this one up here? Oh, I found the attack. Found the attack. He's using the Buster Sword. Oh, oh. Lots of attacks, lots of attacks, and I'm gonna move him. Hold on, I'm moving Ross. I'm I'm, I'm moving Ro Ro Ross. Oh no, he fell. Uh, I pressed Crouch. Uh oh, he's prone. All right, Ross is prone for the rest of this podcast. Uh, <laughs> no, he's back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I thought I just heard like music ramping up. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> said, what is this nightmare? <laughs> um, oh. Did I tell well, you I'm glad... I, I... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm glad it finally that's come to a close. Yeah. I also uh, found this bad boy. Hey. My Vita. Uh, so this thing's powered up and it's still, this thing still like works really well. Um, yeah. I have to decide if I'm going to get another memory card for it because I lost all the ones I've ordered. Um, Wait, what? <laughs> all of them. You've lost all the ones you've ordered? Yeah, like, I've ordered th three of them and one was an eight gig and I lost that. One was a 32 gig and I lost that. And one was a 64 gig and I lost that. The reason I lost them is because they never made it into the Vita. Are they all in that closet? No, none okay. of them are in that closet. They're probably in a drawer yep. or underneath something or underneath everything. Because yes. they're tiny little bastards and they're scrappy. They are. Um, they truly are truly the worst uh <laughs> what are you planning on playing on it again maybe freedom wars <laughs> probably freedom wars they'll, 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 they'll remake that game any day now don't even worry about to. that man i'm worried though the retroid so apparently twisted metal head-on does not run incredibly well on this thing hmm. uh but i think the video i saw was of the original retroid pocket because it said Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, but I think the YouTube video I watched said Plus, but I think it said Retroid Pocket 2. Yeah, the 2 so is way know. less powerful than the 2 Plus. So I'm hoping Twisted Metal Head-On runs well, because that's honestly the, the most important game to me, is being able to play that, because that's weirdly my favorite Twisted Metal game. I need to, I need to charge mine. It's 
We'll check back a little later in the podcast. I think I have head on on my Pocket 2 Plus, so oh, we can do a check. That would be amazing if so, you did that. let that charge for a little bit. Hell yeah. I think that's all I got right now for games. I, well, I guess, you know, do you want to talk about Destiny at all? Nothing really crazy going on there. Um, yeah, no, nothing really new to talk about there. I've done some GMs this season, did some cool stuff. Uh crafting continues to be weird and cool uh and like obtuse but still cool Mm -hmm. i don't have i don't really have any new information for you on destiny i just still play a lot of it yeah that makes sense yeah um i have really not played almost anything over the past month uh i only have the ability to hyper focus in on one thing at a time And so for a while it was games again. And for the first time in probably five years or so, it's back to anime, which has been a lot. Um, I've, I watched all of Erased, which I really enjoyed. Um, That's a, a good kind of mystery thriller anime. Um, I'm in the middle of watching Monster. Oh, yeah. I don't have a game section to contribute, so it's back to Anagen. Um, yes, we're back on Anagen. Back on Anagen. Uh, started watching Monster, which um, came highly recommended, um, which is this another kind of mystery thriller from like the early 2000s, 74 episodes. The uh, The kind of main character's voice actor is... Liam O'Brien, who is one of the main cast members in Critical Role and plays um, bad boy Akihiko in Persona 3. And that show has been a very slow start. I've heard it's it takes a while to get going, but then once it does, you like can't breathe because stuff keeps happening so fast. Um, so I'm excited to get deeper into that. Oh, real quick. I don't know if you know, but I logged into my Crunchyroll account on your Roku. Uh, so I, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. if you already have your own crunchy roll, but you can use that if you want. I, I do, but I appreciate that. Okay. Um, series called Sakamoto Deska, or Haven't You Heard, I'm Sakamoto. Um, it is a 13-episode series about this high school guy who's basically perfect at what he does and is extra with everything and is just like overly stylish with everything he does, whether it's like wiping down a chalkboard after class or literally anything. It's hilarious. Chris, you should watch it. I think you would find it funny. Okay. Um, I will give you my login. It's only streamable on, and there is a dub. Um, It's only streamable on a website called High Dive which um, is just another anime streaming website, but it's... Yeah, a, give it to me right now. One. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah social yeah, security right number now. is... Yeah. Um, I need your credit card number, too. Uh, they're okay, cool. They're going to verify that. Uh, Three digits I'll on the back. Perfect. Yeah, no, thank you. Perfect. I got a pen and paper. Um, <laughs> so I've been watching all those. Also, I've been doing my rewatch of the original Neon Gen- Genesis Evangelion. Um, so... It, this was in licensing hell for a while um, between, I think, like 2010 and like 2017 or 18. The Netflix got the license, so now it's all on Netflix, but they redubbed it. Um, I originally watched the original ADV dub from 97, if that's when it came out. Um, and and I, I didn't have nostalgia for it um because i watched the series for the first time in like 2015 um but those are the voices i enjoy i tried watching the netflix one and it's like some of them sound close and then some sound just very different and it was affecting my enjoyment so um the only way to watch the adv original dub is the DVD set because they never released the original series on Blu-ray. <laughs> so this platinum edition seven disc DVD set that the rest of is in my closet. 
um so i've been watching it i just i watched through the first 10 episodes again this past weekend you know what you need to do love it. rip those dvds yeah yeah i do rip preserve that yeah yeah um yeah evangelion is still my favorite series my favorite anime series ever um it's when i first watched it in 2015 like i was super low with a lot of stuff that was happening in my life and just watching that show and seeing all of these like incredibly broken people like made like made me empathize with them and made me feel like i wasn't alone and the series presents itself on the surface as this just like mecca show but it's really about a study of like humanity and self-worth and relationships that's just way deeper than you would think just looking at like the box cover and so it still hits me that same way to this day and after i finish the series i'm gonna go through and watch all the rebuild movies i've watched the first two um but i'm gonna rewatch them because i haven't watched them since they first came out i have the first two i need to yeah. watch the last two yeah yeah and it's and it's just the story goes in such a weird in such a crazy different place in the movies so which i'm excited to see um and then so th i think that's it on like the anime front i obviously have i have a oh my god it's nice. oh attack on titan holy crap yep that's yep. what kind of prompted <laughs> all of this um like i had watched the first season um when it came out i was like it's good but it's not as good as everyone says it is um and then i kind of didn't go back to it um i know it took a long time between se for season two to come out like three or four years um and then season three came out and it was split up into parts season four is out and the first two parts are out with the last part coming out early 2023 and man that show is a rare case of a show that keeps getting better yeah um <laughs> yeah. like the transition as from the beginning of the series who like the main villain is to where we're at in season four of wh who the main villain is and, and, and the turn and, that took and the concept of what the main villain is yeah and and, and like i love like my favorite thing about that whole show is just that like it lets you believe what you want to believe and so i had such a belief of like this is what this story is going to be and then they just basically held up a middle finger to me and they said, watch this. And I watched it and I was just like, I don't know anything anymore. And this is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and, then just... once, oh man. and then once you know what's going on and you're just like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. It has not gone the way I thought it would, which makes me very happy. Um, I think that just makes for such an incredible show when it's just like, you have no idea anymore. Like, yeah. It's just like, I have no clue what's happening, but I love it. Yeah. I mean, like halfway through season three is when it really kind of clicked for me. Um, just showing us that there was more to what was going on outside of what we had seen so far. Yeah. Um, and just kind of, it expanded the world so much. Yeah, um, it's it's a it's a jarring shift, mm -hmm. and I think next week we're doing actual Anna Jen spoiler cast, right? I believe so. Yeah, because yeah. I just watched eighty six this week. Next week is eighty seven. Nice. Well, I think yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the last one. Yeah, so yeah. next week, uh, I believe we will be reconvening and we will be doing a spoiler cast for Attack on Titan: The Story So Far, mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to end yeah. up being a long one. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's so much to talk about, but yeah. like that that shift at first, I didn't know what to think, mm -hmm. but yeah, then like that. Yeah. that first episode, cause it's just, it's so wildly different from where we left off that I was like, I don't really know what are to you talking about the shift think? in three or the shift in three or the shift in four. What are you talking about? I'm sorry. 
Which uh, shift in well, three? I was originally talking about the shift to show us that there was a lot more to everything than what we had just seen in the series thus far on the land that they had been on where some of that oh, stuff you're, you're starts to be revealed. About, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I was thinking, yeah. Okay. Oh, season yes, four, episode one. That's another. You're, yes. Shift. You're yeah, talking yeah. about the flashback, right? The, the like the, the, the kind of flashback kind of, yeah. of a certain character. Yeah, where they're in a different place and talking about questions. how they got to where they were. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. I forgot that was season three. Oh my god. Yeah. Yes. That like that was super important. But yeah, that my thing was like that was really cool for like the world building. But the really cool mm-hmm. thing for me was the the huge shift. The first episode of season four was when it it's became like, like yeah, it's like the first like four or five episodes of season four. Yeah, it's just and, like. And it's just like, where are you going with this? Like, I'm yeah. still interested, but like, I don't know why. I'm just interested because I'm like, I know you're doing something with this mm-hmm. and I want to figure it out. And then you just see that person in the background. And you're like, I think I know who that is. Yeah. It, it sounds like someone I know. And then when it happens and you're just like, what the fuck? Yep. Yep. <laughs> And then the show goes off the fucking rails again. <laughs> it's crazy. It is crazy. If and, and I know that the the manga has been finished. I so I don't know how it ends because I haven't read the manga. But if Attack on Titan sticks the landing, oh, one of the greats. Like it's already my favorite show of all time. Like without question, there's yeah, just nothing. Yeah, it's like the the biggest complaint I've seen from people is that the animation quality in season four has dipped because they changed studios. Um, and like, I could kind of see that with some of like the CG, like isn't quite as good. Um, I think there's less CG and I think I like that a little bit better. I yeah, haven't really, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't actually know there was a change. Mm-hmm, so yeah. it's not something that has bothered me. I will tell you though, the ending of episode 85 is haunting between the music and the the look in that character's eyes right at the end um it is so good and like it was right at a point it cuz it was funny cuz there was a point around like episode like 82 or 83 where i was like i feel like this was the part cuz I, I at this point i had known that there was going to be another part to the finale and mm-hmm. i was like okay this is the part where they wind down and they're going to just set up the next part and I was like, yeah. oh, so they're not, they're going to let this season go and then they're going to pick up. And then the very next episode, they were like, fuck that shit. <laughs> we're going to just go crazy again. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Show continues to be phenomenal. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's, it is, it's, it's it is more- incredible. It is well paid. Like season one has the unenviable task of, having to establish this whole world but like it's also a weird thing where in retrospect season one is way better because of how much of the heavy lifting it does to allow the rest of the show to happen you can attack on titan as it is right now doesn't exist if season one doesn't exist the way it is yeah like i have pacing problems with season one with how fast it starts and then how hard it pulls back and i have pacing problems with season two and even, and again, I think this might just be because I was, I watched everything back to back, but going from season three to the beginning of season four, that felt like someone hit the emergency break on the pacing for the first couple of episodes as well, where everything was going at a hundred miles an hour, season three, and then first few episodes of season four, just like stop. So and then, yeah. that's one thing I actually like about Attack on Titan and I know this sounds a little backwards, but again, because like, you know, I, I had that big Sword Art thing and Sword Art has this insatiable desire to continue to escalate the stakes and never stop. Sure, sure. So I Sword think, Art never knows yeah. when to pump the brakes. Whereas Attack on Titan, I think knows what it's doing, where it gets to this high point And then it's like, okay, we're going to let you guys come down from that. We're going to let mm-hmm. you guys process that. We're going to give you time to get that all settled in your head. Then we're going to throw you at the brick wall. Yeah. And you're going to just explode. And then we're going to put you back together. And then we're going to 
throw you at a bigger brick wall. And it's just like, they get it where it's like, I like those kind of brief moments and I, I maybe wouldn't like it as much if I was watching it week to week, but like even this though, like the down weeks, it's like, yeah, a down week in attack on Titan sucks, but it's also a down week in attack on Titan is still better than most shows you can watch. Yeah. So it's like, it's still better quality television or streaming content than almost anything else I could be watching right now. Um, but like, I, I, I do kind of enjoy like, Again, it's kind of a retrospective thing. If they don't start season four that way, they can't do season four the way they're doing it. Like, you oh, don't yeah, get no. that big explosive moment uh, yeah. if you yeah. don't establish those first four episodes. Yeah, so, and, 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 the, and the beginning of season four in terms of pacing is the one I by far have the least problem amount of problems yeah. with. Because it, Season it's, three, it's, I don't really remember having any issues except kind of some of the flashback stuff. But, like, even that was, like, cool in its way. And, again, it's necessary to it's necessary for that conclusion of that season and for so much of what happens in season four uh season two i actually really liked because that thing it was just breakneck but it was also only 12 episodes so mm, yeah i didn't have any problems with that because it was just like it was just a, a flash of like crazy nonsense and i kind of yeah liked it. Yeah, and I think part of my frustration with season two, and we'll get into this more yeah. um, next week, but part of my issue with season two is that I was really interested because the season primarily focused on the side characters. Yes. Um, it was which almost entirely I, not about Aaron. Yeah, which I enjoyed. Yeah. But at the same time, I wanted answers from season one. And that's, and so season two does not like, do th that really. Felt like felt in some ways and again i like season two it's not my, it's probably my least favorite season but season two in a way felt like filler because they built up so many questions in season one and you get the answers finally mostly in season three and then season two again it's a shorter season two which makes makes the the weight a little more a little uh more bearable but i think i was and again this is probably this is probably an issue of me like binging the entire series in like two days, like three to four days. It's the um, best way. Yeah. But I finished, <laughs> but I finished season one and I was like, okay, season two. Yo, season two has such a strong first episode though, because that first episode is so good. Together. I can't differentiate. <laughs> I don't know see, which one was the season. It, two it's the first one where you see the beast Titan for the first time. Oh yeah. 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 yeah like yeah, that yeah, first yeah, yeah. episode. That designed. <laughs> and just seeing all of that for the first time and then yeah. having what happens in that happen yeah. and just being like, just as confused as that guy. And I'm just yeah. like, what? Like I literally sat there. I was like, what the fuck? I watched it at work. I was on break. I had just finished rewatching season one. I watched that on break. I came home. I watched it again because I was like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. It, like I, after not... everything that happens in season one and that, that ending, Mm -hmm. and then it's like what the fuck is happening <laughs> yeah, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie um aaron's dad throughout like the the course of the seasons that we've seen parts of his story gives me hella strong hohenheim vibes <laughs> from full bit. metal yeah a little yeah. bit except he is not he is very he's much not, not hohenheim <laughs> no he's, he's no, not, he is he, not he's not the mastermind but no. he has that mysterious past that is affecting yes. his his children. Yeah, he in, definitely in yeah. Major ways. Yeah, like that's that's a cool thing. But like at the same time, is that what's really affecting him? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Was <laughs> it all of him? The show is insane. Me let that huh? No one knows. It's just the, it's just the show is is it, like it's crazy. I have never seen a show that re like answers so many questions. But then just keeps creating more questions in ways that it's not like it's never frustrating. It's always just like, I gotta watch the next episode. Yep. Like every yep. time I finish watching an episode of Attack on Titan, they always end it in such a way that I'm like, fuck, I gotta wait another goddamn week to figure this shit out. But I'm not mad. I'm just like, I wanna watch it right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's Attack on Titan is one of the few, I would say shows that are hyped to hell and back that actually live up and surpass the hype. It really I don't I don't think you could overhype Attack on Titan. Yeah, like the first like, season was super hyped and it was overhyped for me. 
but I, you're as watching a whole, everything. Yeah, as a I, whole, I don't think you can overhype Attack on Titan. At at this point, I have not. They've not given me any reason to think that they won't stick the landing with how solid things have been in that show. Like I, 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 I almost I, like. Listen, I am not a manga guy. When we were at Newberry, I almost bought the manga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how, that's how much I'm enjoying this. Where I'm like, I could just read it. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've thought about starting the manga. Um, but I can't. But, I gotta watch uh, it. On my anime list, I, I've rated all of the Attack on Titan seasons and parts. Here's how... And my anime list uses a 1 to 10 scale. Um, season 1, I gave a 7. Season 2, I gave an 8. Which I think... I gave it an eight because of the additional questions it set up that offset the lack of my, answers, the lack of answers. Yeah. Um, and I really do did like those, the side character stories. It that, wasn't like I was against it again. It was just like, and, and I, I really just liked that. It was, it was just a concentrated, like season it, two. Everything just occurred every, over the course of like two days or something in season every, two. Yeah. Every episode of season two is just like, it's five minutes long. Yeah. Every yeah. episode is over in five minutes. And you're just like, what do you, you mean it's over? You know, and it's like a full length episode, but you feel like you've only been watching for five minutes. And you're like, well, you can't be done. I'm not I'm done near. with you yet. <laughs> like- <laughs> um, yeah. And so seven season one, eight season two. And then I've given nines to season three and everything so far in season four. It's, it's like, I love this show and it's one of my favorite shows of all time. But for it to like, oh, as an overarching show, to get a ten, it has for me. It has to stick the landing. landing. It has Which is, to, and that's why like a show like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is so good. Is because they stick oh, yeah. the landing. They stick know? the landing. Yeah, and, absolutely. And like that's the thing is like it's satisfying how everything plays out in that show, and like everybody mm-hmm. leaves, and you get that conclusion. And one, it's definitive, and two, it's a good ending, and it's yes. like that's so important, and like. Yeah that's so many shows don't do that no rarely do shows stick the ending i'm trying to remember steins gate had a good ending right steins gate had a good ending i've given steins eight an eight on my list steins eight but it's that that is due for a rewatch for me i i just man anytime i think about watching that show i just think about oh it's broken and i'm just like oh no i can't go through this again (laughs) every time i hear oh it's broken and i'm just like i feel for that man and i'm just like no not again (laughs) oh no not again (laughs) how many times Dude, like oh, that is such a good like part of that. Sh- oh man, I do. I should watch that again. Steins yeah, Gate is a really good show. Again. Because the first time I watched it, I was like, "Now I'm I go in knowing what to expect." And I think when you watch a show like a second time, knowing in or going in knowing what to expect, it completely reframes your enjoyment of the show. Um, it was like that way with Attack on Titan season one, where I liked yep. it more yep. the second time watching it than the first time. Um, and I think with Steins Gate, I think it would do the same thing for me. And that's why, and that's why eventually I'm going to try to give Sword Art Online another chance. Right now I have Sword Art Online season one rated at a seven and Sword Art Online two at a six. Um, and I haven't watched anything beyond that. I might so. give them both a seven. Yeah. Two was much, be- two, nothing will beat the first half. Nothing will beat Aincrad. Ironcrad yes, I really isolated Ironcrad. is probably yeah. like a nine. Yeah. Eight at worst. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I'm with that. I'm with that. Al, you know, with Alfheim and everything, I would still maybe give season one an eight, and I would consider mm. giving season two an eight because I, I personally think GGO is really cool. Um, And I ended up really – I would probably give both of those seasons an eight. I would probably give Alicization a seven, maybe as low as a six. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's weird, and then War yeah. of Underworld, I would probably bring that back up to maybe like a seven or an eight. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah. just that show is my... it's like, as a whole as a collective, it's Sword Art is almost worse as a collective than it is as individual <laughs> seasons because it's exhausting when you watch them all together. Um, mm-hmm. but like, yeah. 
as isolated bits and pieces, like I really like the Mother Rosario art. I think season two might be my favorite, honest to God, yeah, because really season two season. has a really good balance of where the first half is, you know, really about like Kirito and Sinon is a really good character and her growth and development through the rest of that show is better than literally everyone else in the show because she's the only character who gets any level of growth and development. Um, because like not, not really a spoiler, but kind of spoiler. Like at one point, like later on, she's like talking about scene on and she makes the finger gun and he's just like, Oh, you're getting better. And she's like, yeah, I don't really, it doesn't really bother me as much now. Like in the later season, I'm like, ah, that's development. That's I like that. And she's so cool. <laughs> like she's sitting there making the finger gun and I'm like, she's doing it. She's doing it. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, Asuna should... gets a really solid arc in season two that redeems what they did to her in Alfheim. Yeah, yeah. You should you should update your my anime list because it would be fun to compare. I have, one. I have to make, should make one, one. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I'm just lo- like looking through this list and it's just like bringing back memories of like each of these shows when I originally watched them. It's like my lowest rated thing is Full Al- Full Metal Alchemist: The Sacred Star of Milos. Which I th- I believe was the movie for Brotherhood because Conqueror of Shambhala I believe was for the original yes. series and I I really liked Conqueror of Shambhala I gave that an eight Sacred Star that of one was okay I wasn't crazy about that movie I know a lot of people didn't like Conqueror of Shambhala but I know I really nobody that. I don't think anybody liked Sacred Star of Milos yeah yeah no no it was it was not good I I still haven't seen it yeah it's because i heard you know, it was need, bad and i was like whatever i don't need that in my life i need to rewatch log horizon i gave i finished season, season one, one of that again that was good. i gave season one an eight um, so far i'm liking season two it. a lot yeah i need to watch season two i'm a, I'm a good chunk into that um what the hell else i've been watching oh i finished my dress up darling right i loved it <laughs> i loved it I've, I've only heard good things that show is so charming and like it is fan servicey, but like in a fun way because she she is fan servicey. Like she will do dumb things that are fan servicey, but she does them like intentionally. And she's like, "What you looking at?" You know. But like not not in like a, a like oh you're such a perv kind of way, but in a like playful oh come on don't be so stuck up you know. Mm. Um, yeah. like she'll just be like you know she'll do dumb stuff and she'll be like you like she'll be changing and he's like not in my room and she's like why you don't want to stay and he's just like what <laughs> <laughs> she's like i'm just kidding you dork like she talks like a person and i really like mm-hmm. that like and she <sighs> i really like that show you should watch that i'm upset uh, it's, that it's, it's on over. my list yeah uh, i started spy x family um nice. that's been really good so far uh first two episodes um on, let me pull up my crunchy roll real quick and I can tell you what I have been doing in the world of anime. I also, um, for, for a four out of ten, I also gave Soul Eater. <gasps> yeah, for that Soul Eater's bad, dude. Uh, love After World Domination. Mm. I love that show already. So basically, Love After World Domination, uh, you fight, gel- you, or you follow Gelato Force 5. Uh, which is like the Power Rangers, but they are themed after like frozen treats. So yeah. the red gelato is strawberry, blue gelato is soda, yellow gelato is lemon, pink gelato is peach, and green gelato is pistachio. And they all have themed attacks named after their respective flavors. Of course they um, do. But the show literally starts and it's red gelato. And like, this is the girl, the evil girl sitting up there. And she's like, oh, I made you these cookies. He's like, these are delicious. And like one of the gelatos goes to climb up. They're on top of like this cliffside, like surrounded by all these like cherry blossom trees and stuff. And you see the hand come up. He pops his helmet. He's trying to get her to like hold his hand. He pops his helmet, she puts her hood up, and they're just, like, clashing and, like, energy and, like, the trees are waving. And he's just like, whoa, this is a crazy fight. He's like, I can't help. Good luck, Red. And he drops back down, and he's just like, look, we're holding hands. (laughs) And she's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And she's like, and doing it the way we did is, like, expert level because none of them have any idea how to be in a relationship. And it's Mm -hmm. just, like... He asks, like, the leader for advice, and he's just like, go tell her how you feel. And he's trying to tell the guy, like, who she is, but he won't listen. 
And so he doesn't realize like she he's in love with like the enemy factions like battle commander. Cause he followed her on Instagram, basically. <laughs> and he found out all these things about her. She's like, I I eat raw bear. And he's like, No, your favorite meals are pasta and something else. And he's like, You always do your nails real cute. No, you have cute accessories. And she's just like, Don't. And he's like, I love you. And she's like, Okay, I'll try. <laughs> It's just so funny. He asked, like, when he asked to hold her hand, she's like, I'm not, I'm not ready. You're moving way too fast. It's only our third date. And he's like, most couples hold hands on the second or third date. And she's like, how are all these couples so confident? <laughs> it's, 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 it's so charming. And I can't wait for the second episode to be dubbed, but it's, it's yeah, so good like- because they keep getting interrupted and it's just like at one point she has to like kick his ass so it looks like they're not like on a date so she mm-hmm. like beats him up and he's just like oh, I'll get you next time as he like can't breathe <laughs> yeah I need to just take like like 45 minutes or an hour and create a my anime list account and just start going to town yeah oh, because to it's it, it's fun um the other aspect which i completely blame this previous pax weekend on specifically i blame nat and cypher is because i've started reading manga now (laughs) i haven't read manga for a long time um the longest manga i ever read was i shield 21 which was 333 chapters um i over the course of a couple days i read the manga pluto which um, is an alternate kind of darker realistic take on Astro Boy, which was really interesting in the form of like a murder mystery. Um, I liked it. Um, But Chris. Yes. I need you. I'm not religious and you're not religious, but I need you to pray for me. I've never wanted to watch the show because I find the art style, especially in motion, just unappealing. But every one that, and every video I watch from people who have read and watched a ton of stuff, they're like, man, some of the best moments in One Piece are some of the best moments in the history of the medium. I've started reading the manga. (laughs) There goes Chris. I'm only five chapters in. There are over a thousand chapters. Um, that's something I'm just going to be slowly chipping away at. Um, I've heard that it gets, starts to get good after chapter (laughs) hundred. So I'm a a 20th of the way there. Um, but I'm mixing that in with some other ones, like one manga that I actually do really want to read Chris because the ending failed us in so many ways is soul leader. Because the ending is not what we saw in the anime. Uh, it was so bad, I don't remember what it was. It's, and even uh, if you they, tried to remind me, I wouldn't remember. They beat the big bad with the power of friendship at the very end. Literally can't even remember who the big bad yep. is. Uh, nope, I just know it, it turned into... I just into... remember I liked the main girl's voice because it was Laura Bailey. Yep, Maki. Yeah, um, and she did yeah, like, the cute young it's... voice for that. And I was like, aww. It, and then the show was awful. The the premise of the show. Oh, was, death was cool too. Yeah, yeah, he was kind of pre- cool. The premise of the show was really cool with this like school setting for these like like uh, like soul stuff with the people or weapons, and it's cool. And then halfway through, it just turns into the most generic shonen anime of all time. And they beat the big bad, but with the power of friendship at the very end, and I was like. Oh no, but apparently the anime changed a lot of what the manga was, not just the ending, but also character development. And I remember Black Star, regardless of the sub or the dub, I hated that voice acting. It was so annoying. Oh, but like, that's one I'm going to give a shot. And then the, the biggest one for me is the one that everyone says is like top three manga of all time that hasn't had a really solid anime adaptation which is berserk um with the creator passing away a couple years ago um 
that is very high up on my list. But yes, I've begun. I ordered to read manga. both Ultramarine Omnibuses. I bought the the Death Watch one, and you know we're never going to read those. I'm going to read them. You say that now. It, one of them is arriving Friday. It's the first one. You, you say you're going to read it now. They're going to end up like your Vita memory cards somewhere. <laughs> Next month, I will have finished one of the books in one of them. Because they're three books each. Yeah. <clears throat> I will talk about Warhammer next month yeah. and we will see if I fall down the slippery slope. <sighs> Zane got me hooked on the Warhammer idea. Thanks to those damn orcs yep. and the fact that they think blue is lucky. And so the ultramarines are awesome. I'm going to try and finish space Marine finally. Yeah. I'm thinking of just putting on a cheat engine and going to town. Sure. Yeah. Because I just um, I just want to see what happens. Yeah. <clears throat> but in terms of Anagen, I think that's most of what I have. It's just I'm just reading manga and watching anime. April was an anime it month. It really was. Ross. Yes. Why don't you tell us about what games we have to look forward to in May? Because there mm. will be game talk next month. Uh, because I still have the Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga sitting here oh. that I need to play. Oh, you played that? I did play that. You're welcome. That, ga- <laughs> that game is super fun. I like that game a lot. I kept um, seeing th- videos of it, and I was like, I think I have to buy this. It's really good. It only has local co-op, which is a bummer. But, man, that game is way more beautiful than it has any right to be as a Lego game. And, and I love it. That was the last game ba before anime hit where that i played before my life was consumed so games coming out in may we have ayuden chronicle rising which is the rpg from the creator of suikoden uh which was there at pax um that i did not play um but it is kind of interesting to me um that comes out on may 10th also on May 10th is Salt and Sacrifice, which is the sequel to Salt and Sanctuary, um, the beloved Metroidvania. Um, let's see. We have Vampire the Masquerade Swan Song on May 19th. Sniper Elite 5 on May 26th. And that's kind of it. For uh, May. <clears throat> well, Game Informer apparently is we, missing something. We were here. Oh, yes. That is not on this. Yes. We were here forever on May, May 10th. May 10th. Yes. Put some respect on its name. So there you go. Um, and then another, we also get another six month season of Halo uh, where three of those months will still not have campaign co op. Indeed. Yes. Campaign co op pushed back to August. Destiny's Great. new season also comes out in May, at the oh, end of May. Go. Um, yeah. apparently Bungie is super fucking hyped about that. Like they're doing every time they do the, every time you just see a bunch of people tweeting Bungie, uh, it usually means they just got out of a meeting and it went very well. Hmm. Uh, and the last time they did all this was in the lead up to witch queen. Uh, and that worked. So apparently like they're the way they're talking about next season, they're like, they're doing a bunch of stuff like they've never done before. Um, and it sounds like the seasonal model, if, if if the growth continues from what they did last year into this year, it's going to be fucking incredible. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. But uh, Guardian Games is also happening in May. So you mm. can wrap your Guardian. You might want to actually, if you have any cosmetic desire, uh, there is a really good Warlock set of armor that looks real sharp for Guardian Games uh, that you might mm. want to get. But um Otherwise, that's going to be probably a good chunk of my month is just banking medals and trying not to let the hunters win. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, have no I fear. The hunters to win. June second, Diablo Immortal comes out, so game of the year right there. It's coming to PC. Yeah, I'm well, the, actually vaguely interested in playing that now. <laughs> the, the, yeah. Um. They did the thing but, that everybody joked about that they were like, you should have just done this and it would have been fine. And then they were like, 
what if we just did this and everything was fine? <laughs> wow. Um, l- lastly, we'll go over the PS Plus games and gang of gold Xbox games and gold gold games. Gold, gold, gold. Gold. Um, PlayStation Plus games for May 2022. Tribes of Midgard. Curse of the Dead Gods. And FIFA 22. For Xbox. Apparently they haven't announced it yet as the headlines are still predictions for the May Xbox games with gold games. So at the time of this recording, not announced. And then if you're listening to this remotely close to um, the post date of it, then you also, if you are on PC, always have your handy dandy Epic Games free game that happens that just now loaded. Fantastic. And so, what's currently free as of right now is maybe this was a paid expansion? Warframe Angels of the Zeremen. Sure. Um, wait, no, I lied. It had not loaded all the way. Free games right now. Amnesia Rebirth, free until actually April 28th, so tomorrow, um, as well as Riverbond. Uh, for the beginning of uh, May, from April 28th to May 5th, Just Die Already, Old People Mayhem Sandbox is free, which I'm kind of interested in now, um, and a game called Paradigm. So there you go. Highly recommend uh, Lego Star Wars. It's a lot of fun. One uh, one last thing I did want to touch on real quick, um, because there's a rumor going around right now, and I just see in my email. So there there was this um, thing I, I I joined for like giving feedback to Twitch. Uh, it, it was a movement by like smaller streamers to get Twitch to do payouts instead of at like a hundred dollars, either increase the percentage so that you could get mm-hmm. payouts sooner, or decrease the amount for the payout so that creators could get paid like every week or every other week. Yeah. Um, so there's a rumor right now that what Twitch is doing is they're going to some top streamers have a 70, 30 cut on tier one subs where they get 70%. Twitch gets 30 Twitch is considering moving everything to 50, 50 and increasing ad revenue for streamers. Hmm. So instead of paying them more for subs, they're going to pay them to run more ads. Interesting. So instead of watching the content, you're going to watch ads. Okay. Uh, So needless to say, there are now a lot of people commenting on that, just saying nobody hates Twitch streamers more than Twitch. uh, And it is generally going over awfully. Uh, So shocker. And if any other service like YouTube or Facebook had any level of discoverability for streamers, they would be seeing a massive influx of users, but unfortunately they don't. Yeah. You can't find streams on YouTube unless you're already like subscribed to a channel that does YouTube streams. Um, Right. Right. So therein lies the problem. There is no easy alternative and Twitch is doing everything they can as the market leader to remind people why they shouldn't be the market leader anymore. Yeah. YouTube, the ball is in your court. Just yeah, make discoverability really... a thing. Yeah. Remember that time they brought out that app and they said it was a failure? Maybe bring out that YouTube gaming app again. Maybe now is the time. Maybe it was too soon. The world was Maybe wasn't now. Ready. Oh, I heard that. It's beautiful. I love it. Oh, we're doing a live test here. Oh, are we doing the um? I'm checking Twister head on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. It's starting up, guys. Uh, while Ross is doing that, I know this episode was kind of all over the place. Um, these episodes are kind of a lot of fun for us because when we just kind of talk. 
and we just go off. I, I'm sure you guys maybe felt it in the second half when we tried to touch on the normal stuff, um, like talk about the games and stuff like that. Things kind of you know, went downhill until we started talking. I think going forward, um, these podcasts are definitely just going to be more me and Ross talking. Um, and I, I think we're going to get more and more, we're going to get further and further away from the, from the video games. I think half gen is going to be less of a video game podcast and more of just an entertainment podcast. Um, so something to bear in mind. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I think you guys can feel the difference in the energy, you know, depending on what we're talking about. And there's still going to be games. The games aren't going away because I still play a lot of games. But like, I, I definitely think our best future is, you know, letting this show be... I'm actually going in right now and I'm changing from video games to, I guess, leisure. Because that's animation and manga, that's games, that's video games. Yeah, leisure. Cool. I have just updated the podcast. We are now a leisure podcast. Save. Now our name makes less sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Um, but yeah, I, I think going forward... I think a lot of our formula goes out the window and we're just, it's going to be scattered conversations just talking about whatever the hell we want to talk about. But uh, I really think, and I'm sure Ross agrees. I saw a couple nods over there. Uh, that That's just the way I think we, we operate the best is just talk about stuff we're passionate about. Oh, we didn't even talk about halo. What the show. Halo? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a good yeah. episode. Finally. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> episode five was okay. It's it's been it, it was better than the the previous ones. Still, probably like a six instead of a five. I really hate almost everything they're doing with that human character. On the Covenant side. Yep. Yep. I'm yeah, not I looking really forward to the next. I'm not looking forward to episode six because I know she's going to be in it. Would you believe me if I told you I forgot I had forgotten about her until she showed up at the end? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maki, everyone's favorite character. What? No. No. I'm talking about the. Oh, Quan? No. Oh, wait. Maki is her name? Maki is the Covenant human. Yeah. Oh. M A K E E. Maki. Yeah. Fuck that bitch. Uh, <laughs> um, having uh, problems loading head on right now. Not sure if I have a bad bad copy or not, but cannot confirm or deny. We can we can hop over on Discord after and we can take a look at it. But um, yeah. Let's yeah. wrap up the show. Uh, Ross, do you have yep. anything to add to that or? Uh, no potential. We'll see when we convene back next month to see if the rumor about Microsoft potentially buying Ubisoft happens. Um, but other than that, no, I just remembered that I have a sink full of dishes I was supposed to wash before the wife gets home in about 15 minutes. So that's probably what I'm going to do right after this. I get to edit this all. <laughs> yeah. You're so good at it though. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. And we'll catch you for next month's episode. Uh, there will be more anime. Uh, that's yours now, by the way. May it serve you well. He's now waving. I on it. She's like, what the hell is this? And I was like, it's Chris's. <laughs> I didn't realize it ended up on the floor. That's my bad. <laughs> it's yours now. It's your sword. Yep. Carry it well. You are yep. my living legacy. <laughs> see you next month <laughs> bye <laughs> little little